there. This is Veena from Fata Cake, the channel that's about baking and much much more. A warm welcome to my channel. Today, let's make a classic Goan prawn and ladies finger curry. A caldinho to be exact, or caldin as it is popularly called. It's a mildly spicy but delicious Goan curry with coconut milk. You could use the same recipe to make a prawn caldin or caldinho using just prawns or a lady's finger caldinho using just lady's fingers or bende as we call them in Konkani. But now let's get cracking with today's prawn and lady's finger curry right away at Pata Cake. We'll start with the lady's fingers. These weigh 250 grams. I had washed them well and will now pat or rub them dry using a kitchen towel. It's necessary to dry lady's fingers before cooking them to prevent them from becoming too slimy. I'll now spread them out a little. Let them air dry for around 15 minutes and then chop them into 2 inches long pieces. These are 25 prawns that I have shelled, deveined and washed. Let's marinate these prawns by mixing them with half a teaspoon of salt and around 1 teaspoon of lime juice. We'll set this aside for around 20 to 30 minutes. Let's also soak a marble sized ball of tamarind in around a quarter cup of warm water for extracting tamarind pulp from it after some time. In the meanwhile, let's extract some spiced coconut milk by grinding fresh coconut with a flavorful mix of spices and other ingredients. Let's check these out. Here I have 5 green chilies. These two I will add directly to the curry and the remaining three I have chopped for grinding along with the coconut. And here I have 2 teaspoons of coriander seeds, 1 teaspoon of cumin seeds, 1 teaspoon of peppercorns, 1 teaspoon of turmeric powder, 6 cloves of garlic that I have chopped, and a 1 and a half inches long piece of ginger that I have sliced. We'll grind all of these with 1 and a half cups of grated fresh coconut. Let's add the masala ingredients too to the grinding jar to which I'll also add half a cup of water to start with and then add more later on as required while grinding this coconut mix. Here's our ground coconut masala. I had to add another quarter cup of water while grinding it. We'll extract one cup of thick milk first. You could extract the milk by pressing down the ground mix with the back of a spoon or squeezing it by hand. I like to extract the thick milk with my hand. Here's how you have to do this. This is the only time consuming step in this entire recipe. But when you taste the curry, you'll surely agree it was worth the effort. Let me transfer the thick coconut milk to this bowl. That's around one cup. We'll now grind all of this again twice and extract around one and a half cups of thin coconut milk from it. I'll first add around three quarters of a cup of hot water to the ground mix. Grind it a second time and extract the first batch of thin coconut milk. Similarly, I extracted the second batch using another three quarters of a cup of hot water. Here's the coconut milk we extracted. This is the thick coconut milk and this is the thin milk. Next, let's slit the two green chilies we had set aside earlier on and chop a medium sized onion finely. Here I have 3 tablespoons of oil heating up on a medium flame. Let's now add in the marinated prawns, avoiding adding the small amount of extra marinade in the bowl. But we'll add this to the curry later on. 
Let's saute the prawns on medium heat for around a minute till they turn pinkish in color and then remove them to a dry dish. You could skip the step and add the prawns directly to the curry after the lady's fingers are almost cooked. But this is how I like to make prawn and lady's finger kaldin. Now we have to let the oil continue heating for around a minute so that any water released by the prawns can evaporate from it. We can now throw in the slit green chilies. Let's toss them in the oil for a minute or so and then add in the chopped onion. Let's saute the onion on medium heat till it begins to brown. Okay, now let's add in the lady's fingers and stir them to ensure they are well coated with the oil. We'll fry them for around 2 minutes. And then stir in the tamarind extract. Next, we'll pour in the thin coconut milk. Stir everything. Cover the vessel and let the lady's fingers cook for around 5 to 6 minutes till they are almost done. If you want to add the raw prawns directly to the curry, you'll have to add them at this stage. But we are going to add in the partly fried prawns along with the teaspoon or so of marinade. I'll add a little water to the curry. Let's cover the vessel now. And since prawns need just a few minutes to cook, we'll let the curry boil on medium heat for just around 3 to 4 minutes. It's now time to add in half a teaspoon of salt. We'll add more at the end if necessary. One teaspoon of sugar to balance all the different flavors. And one tablespoon of vinegar. Let's reduce the heat to low and then pour in the thick coconut milk. I'll rinse the bowl with a little water. After adding the thick milk, you shouldn't boil the curry vigorously. Instead, we'll let the kaldin simmer for one or two minutes. Like I mentioned earlier, this is a mildly spiced curry, not somewhat spicy like the Goan Jire Mire. If you want to check out my fish Jire Mire, the link is up here and in the description box below. Finally, we'll sample the kaldin. This is when you could adjust the taste to exactly how you want it to be by adding in more vinegar, salt, or sugar or even a teaspoon or so of crushed green chilies if necessary. I find the curry needs just around half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of sugar. But like I said, you could adjust the curry to your taste. We'll now let the prawn and lady's finger curry simmer for one more minute and then take it off the stove. Our kaldin is ready to be served. Enjoy it with hot steamed rice. If you have the Goa unpolished rice, that would be even better. I hope you'll surely try out my recipe for this rich and delicious Goan curry with coconut milk. Bye for now, but I'll see you soon with yet another quick and tasty recipe.